Hello, everybody. We want you. We're going live tonight for the first time. We're doing two platforms at the same time. We're doing uh, Facebook Live and IG Live. So we want to welcome everybody who is joining us. Wave to everybody. Wave, 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 wave. All right. Welcome everybody, Lottie Dottie and everybody, wherever you may be around the world. We got people. Who you are? I'm getting ready to tell them. Give me a moment. I just said welcome, and then you said <laughs> you jumping in. <laughs> welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Willie Jolly, and this, and this is, is D Taylor Jolly. And, welcome. And we're the authors of the book. Make love. Make money. Make it last. Ten secrets for shaping a great marriage, and we've been married for. 35, 35 years, haven't had an argument in over 33 years. That's not to say we agree all the time. Oh, Lord, no. No mask, yes. Uh, Lydia, uh, Linda, because there, I don't have a mask on. She doesn't have a mask on. Y'all know what that means? Who've been following us for the last few weeks? He was quarantined for 14 days. I mean, I didn't sleep with him. I was not in the bedroom with him for 14 days. She was. Because he was out busy being social. He I had was doing to, the work of the Lord, however. I had to speak at a funeral of a young two. man. Two funerals. One of the older gentlemen, 102 years old. Had led a wonderful life. Wonderful life. And then a 20-year-old who got died, died tragically in a motorcycle accident. His family said, we really want you to speak. Of all the people around the country, we would like you because we <laughs> know we'll be uplifting in this very challenging uh, situation. And so he got so, close to lots of people. And so... Uh, and it made me nervous. So I quarantined him for 14 days. I was quarantined for, for 14 days. And we walked around the house and in the office with masks. With on. masks on. We couldn't get closer than six feet. Because we work from home too. So Yeah. But thanks be to God! <laughs> that I, and we did get tested. I tested negative and so I could sleep and, with her. And I tested negative. We so could get back in the we, bedroom together. Woo! So welcome. <laughs> I'm Welcome. a happy camper now. See, we got our vote shirts on because we want everybody to vote. Do not pass this one by. In fact, I, I, I recorded a video the other night uh, for the Urban League. Uh, they asked me to do a video, and I, I did a different kind of video that would be very different from any of the others they have on why this is important and that your life depends on it. Vote like your life depends on because it because it, it does. does. That's right. But I gave another perspective that most people uh, might not uh, have thought of and I want to do something different. Let's get it on. We got a lot to talk about uh, with this uh, Happily Married Money. I want to thank you. Oh, we got to ask everybody to do a couple things as we get started. We want you to uh, start a watch party. Start a watch party right now, wherever you are, Does wherever that mean you do. Invite other people. Well, you start a watch party so your network will know that we're starting a watch party and they can get tied in. Also, we want you to uh, share it, like it, send it, and, and subscribe to our channels. I want to share something I shared with my son this morning. I think it's important. My son sent me a video of a father. He didn't send it to his mama. Well, he's, the messaging was, thank you, Dad, for always giving me wise counsel, mm. and I listened. And it was a father who came into a wedding ceremony where a son, his son was about to be married to a woman that the father did not approve of. Mm. And the father said, really? Really? You're going to do this after I've told you, no, this is not the right girl for you? And... Um, uh, and it was so amazing. And my son said, you know, and it was a lot of drama. And my son said, Dad, I would listen to you. Was that real? Yeah, it was a live, real living video. It wasn't no game. This was a real video. And, and I said to my son, if you, first of all, I trust who you will choose because of the type of person that I've raised that you know what to look for. You see what kind of woman I chose, that you should choose somebody who you really like being around. Not just because they look good or they got some money or they got a fancy car, they got a big house or got a fancy job. No, you, you choose somebody that you like being around, who is your best friend, somebody you, you care about. Because one day that car, money might go, the car might fall apart, the house might burn down. The body might fall the, apart. The party might fall <laughs> apart. The beauty might, the boom, boom, bam, bam might go away. But you know what? If I boom, boom, my man, boom, boom, bam, bam. Okay. Anyway, that might all go away. But if you like them as a person, 
and you dig being around them, that will never go away if, they, if they're the person who, who is so important to you. That is why we put chapter number one in the book, Friends First. By the way, if you do not have the book, we want to encourage everybody to go get the book, get two copies, get one for you and one for your significant other, because we want you to grow together, to learn together, to, to expand together, and so you can get that at jollymarriage.com. So what's the topic for tonight? Tonight is, do you remember the 21st of September? Love was changing my mind to pretenders. While chasing the clouds away. Now, we, 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 today is September 21st, and everybody know that song? And it talks about, do you remember the 21st of September? And I said, what about the 21st of September? Well, love was chasing my, the minds of pretenders. That those who came in saying, oh, I came in because they had a big house, a big car, fancy money, or uh, whatever. That, but they changed because they fell in love chasing the clouds away because true love really does win in the end and so what we wanted to do was talk about do you remember how you felt when you first met your uh, love do you remember your first kiss do you remember what made you say yes this is the one and my question how to, did you meet oh i'm sorry and my question to you is that today was on a a, a, a piece on one of the tv shows about uh cardi Cardi, Cardi B. Cardi B. Okay, you know I don't know these rap people, but she and <laughs> I her, know that. Oh, you know she and her husband. I didn't know she was married. She's married, and they just filed for divorce. And she said Wait in this minute. interview, "Oh, she listen is new, but they've had a baby, and then they filed for divorce because they got what we call the COVID divorce syndrome." Being together, she said it wasn't. Really? Yeah, she said wasn't cheating. It wasn't the people think it's cheating because of this or that. It was because they argued all the time, stuck in the same room. Do you remember? They forgot why they got together in the first yeah. place, and that's what I want to say. Far too often we see relationships who get off track. Look, they said that if you take uh, a, a plane and you just take it three inches off its right course when it takes off. In a few miles, it'd be like this. And in a few more miles, it'd be way off course. Three inches, three inches. Well, you But it stays three inches off course. It just expands, okay? In other words, that's why they try and, you, you can get off course, but the, the computer brings you back. But what is the computer in your relationship that can bring mm. you back? That's when do you remember what brought you together in the first place? I remember our first um, <laughs> date. Oh, I remember the drugstore. Oh, that was, that a, was not the first that date. That wasn't a date. That was when we when I cornered you. When you cornered me because I was trying to ignore you. Yep. He's a great salesperson. He's very persistent. And I was really trying to ignore you. Yes. And I had given you a bogus number. <laughs> She had given me a bogus number. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Can you believe that? Oh, watch party. Everybody start a watch party. And IG people, y'all shared a happy married Monday with the Jollies. Shared. And anyway, but you, you can. wore me down. I wore down. Now, here's the lessons. What's, what breaks up these marriages in that people forget? Forget. Well, we tell you what big, the things we talk about in the book. Three big things break up marriages. Sex, money, and communication. That's what we talk so about. So the key question is how you felt when how did you feel? How did you feel? How did you feel when you met your current your spouse? Yep. Your current spouse. Could, could, could have been <laughs> did you know that forty one percent of first time marriages fail? Forty one percent. When you get to the second marriage, sixty percent of them fail. So maybe that's how they come up with 50% of, of Christians fail. and non-Christian marriages fail because of the average. But mm -hmm. I was reading, you know, I read everything in the world. But well, 41% of first-time marriages fail. Wow. You know, well, why do they fail? That's what we want to get to. We want to save a million marriages. Communication. Enhance. Communication is a major problem. So let's go back to Cardi B. She and the husband, newly married, got a baby. They got well, money. When did they? I, I, well, it's just it. recent. And they got money. Money's not the issue. Then what is? Is they said, she said, we argued all the time. Wow. We argued all the time. And I got tired of arguing, so I divorced them. Now, first of all, 
it's easy for them to get divorced because they have a lot of money, don't you think? Well, the easy, you know, there's there's no uh, reason to even oh, attempt to work it no, out. No, the easy reason, the, the, I will give you another reason. The easy, the way it's easy to divorce is because they said, we're going to try and make this work. We're getting married. We'll try and stay married. Look here. Pick, pick that up. Put it down. I'll pick it all the way up so everybody can see. Now put it down. Don't pick it up. Don't put it down. Try to pick it up. Try to pick it up. Try to put it down. There's no try. You either do or you don't. So when we got married, what did I say to you? <laughs> <laughs> tell me, when we got married, tell them what I said to you. You can get out of this if you die. I said divorce is not an option. Now, now you do have a way out. You die, you're good, you're good. You're good to go. You die, you good. So we yeah. have to figure out how to work it out. We we'll work I it am, out. I am with him until the end. And and sometimes, you know what? He is a piece of work. All the time. Woo! That's the truth. All the but then you say that I'm a piece of work. And well you know, yes, sir, you're a character. Oh. Like a cartoon character. <laughs> Look at that big glasses. Look at that. I, I can see. All right. She got big glasses. She got crazy looking guy. Go ahead, put on the other ones. Put on the other crazy looking ones. All right. She go from crazy to crazier. Come on. Put down the crazy one looking one. <laughs> Ooh, look. I can see even better. Look. Me. Crazy baby. Is she a character or what? Like a cartoon character. And I say he must like characters because he keeps me close. I keep her close because I like being with her. And goes back to, and we communicate. He never now, knows what to expect. And look, let's go back to the coronavirus issue that and I did not stuck know. Together. And we were stuck together. She did not want me to, to do the funerals. She said, I'm, I've got an issue with this whole coronavirus. I'm, I'm extra careful. Uh, so, but with what we talked about, we talked about it. And when I came back from the second funeral, I said, I think it's prudent. I know you're uncomfortable. I, will, I moved to the other bedroom. She, I said, it's prudent. I will quarantine. I won't come over there. I won't push it. I will wear a mask. I'll do whatever it takes for two weeks to prove to you that I want to respect your feelings. We could talk about and concerns. it. And concerns. And concerns. And we talked about it. Look, folks, communication breaks down marriages or lack thereof. You've got to talk. And, and, and I don't have to be right all the time. It's a lot of times like. Um, it's so it? rare that you're not right. <laughs> well, it's just true. <laughs> this is true. But today you, we talked about something. And I said, you were right about that. You, you know, uh, what was it? I was opening a cabinet cook and you said something happened. And I said, you're absolutely, you, you called that before it happened. Something with coronavirus. Anyway. Oh, uh, I know what we were talking about about the fact that the CDC had put on their website ah, that yes. the air droplets and the like were a concern. And I had mentioned it to you earlier in the day. And you and had talked about that way down, the, but a long earlier, time ago. Right. All right, we got to get, we got a lot of stuff, because you got to get to the dose of D. Okay. So what we want to say is this, a couple of things out of the book that we want to, I see my friend Tim Smith. Uh, I think that's my friend Tim Smith is here. Yeah, that's Timothy Smith, and that's uh, Rhonda and Tim Smith. We talked hey about them last week. Uh, we talked about them last week. They're in the book. And if you get the book, if you don't have the book, you may. Dale it. says you're both characters. Ah, thank you, Dale. That's our <laughs> Hi, other son. Uh, that's John and Tim Smith are in the book in the acknowledgement section. Married, they would have been married then when we wrote the book over 25 years. So they're Ronnie and Lynn Morley are in the book for over 25 years. Uh, we got a lot of the friends who tune in who are in the book, and uh, the uh, some were married 60 years, and some uh, uh, have been married uh, less than that. But we got so many wonderful examples of happily married folks, uh, and so. Let's get back Let's to get, How do you feel thing. when you first met? And what? what? And that is something in terms of communication mm. that you can have a conversation with your spouse about. How do you remember when you first met 
and how you felt about each other. And if y'all are getting off track, remember if we're getting off. To start a conversation. And if you're getting off track, you can pull it back by saying, you remember, this is what attracted me with first. And, and the fact that then you work on it, you build from yes. that. Like we hold hands. We talk about holding hands. We hold hands when we're out. We hold hands just going out when we, we walk it. And we always have a date night. Every week. We remember to have a date night. And sometimes the date nights are kind of weird. Walmart. <laughs> Home Depot. <laughs> but we call it out yeah. as a date night. It's intentional. Yep. that we do something together yep. and it has been out riding in the car he drives me around like driving with daisy sometimes we do that on date night which is every thursday so it is to be intentional and it is to say do you remember and yes what about our first date so our first date was actually at the channel Inn, which is no longer around it was whole gates whole gates whole gates no longer around. No longer around. So he took me to a band, was playing somebody, and we danced our first dance. That's when we really got close. That's when we really physically got close. <laughs> I'm saying he was. No, I had been somewhat resistant. She was. She was standing <laughs> off, but we danced, and she just melted he like tried, a little. He piece. tried to squeeze me. I squeezed her. She <laughs> melted, and then it was on like popcorn. Look, so go uh, back. Tim says communication is key and locked. That's exactly yes. right. That's exactly right. Um, so what, what we got to talk about, how do you stay happily married? Because we got so many people who get start off. Do you remember 21st of September? You know, uh, love was changing my mind. The minds of pretenders while chasing the clouds away. Many people are pretending. You know, as Mrs. Bernice Mitchell told us, you got to find out if when you're dating, you got to find out this person is a, a prospect a suspect or a pretender? Or is this a real person? Is this someone who dressed up nice to impress you? Or is this somebody who really is there for the long haul? And so are you pretending? But sometimes pretenders can get caught up. They can get all caught up and realize, woo, this, this woman is more than I anticipated. This is good. This is what I've been looking for. But we believe that you should start as friends. That's why we went step by step through the book. And all those people we interviewed, what are the steps you must have to have a great marriage? Friends first. Then make God an equal part of your marriage. And decide to make it last. And I think those are three first three. That we, that's, so uh, our time for almost time for our dose of D. But you want to talk about a few of those sir. How you go ahead, what are we gonna write there? Oh, which one? Right there. Intimacy tip. Oh, one. I have I'm working on fifty-two uh tips, like one per week. Uh huh. So this is a good one that we can try to kind of fits in with what we're talking about now. Describe how you want to be kissed and caressed. Mm. And do it every day. Ooh. For a week. For a week. See what that does to your relationship. Mm. Mm. So the tip is <laughs> describe how you want to be kissed. Yeah. And caressed. Mm. Because some people like to be hugged or squeezed or kissed in a certain way. Mm. Like some people like to have their earlobes nibbled on. Mm. Huh? <laughs> so the Excuse goal me, folks, is, we gotta go. <laughs> the goal is to talk about that. Yeah, we do. You have to talk about. It. Many people won't talk about what turns them on, what what they like, what they don't like. They won't talk about it, and then they and wonder you know why, why people won't because know. Because it's uncomfortable, and I think it also depends upon the kind of culture that you grew up in. Mm. If you grew up in an environment where everything was was nasty or dirty and you don't find out about it until you go out in the street and everybody whispers about it, then you bringing that kind of thing into your relationship. And so you end up being standoffish or you're, or you, or you're shy or, or you haven't gotten over the fact that mm. what is supposed to be intimate and, and sacred between the two of you then ends up being a problem because you've never gotten through how to talk to each other just to each other mm. and where you feel safe that's a whole nother issue about i can talk to you about everything my fears because you're not going to hurt me 
Okay, let me read it. Please, okay. please. Read number uh, jolly advice in chapter number four: communication. Talk to each other and not at each other. You must respect each other's communication styles. Identify your spouse's communication styles and discern the differences that reflect their emotions from being under stress to expressing pleasure. Know how to adapt and adjust your communication accordingly. It's not just what you say, but how you say it. We, we say are, that all the time. We say that all the time. I can tell when D is, is not, you know, feeling something or, and we talk about it. And I say, well, what's going on? And we'll talk and she will say something like, this bothers me or that bothers me. And we'll talk about it. We talk about everything. And it has had a profound impact on our marriage. And I think it's it's how you get to do that. I think it can be very difficult if you have not always done that. But when you choose to open up, the person, your spouse that you open up to has to be very thoughtful right. so that it does not hurt you or shut you down so you won't communicate with them anymore right 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 okay right. and most people many people i would say are afraid to open up and express what they really feel for fear that the other person will not be receptive or because now you've got your heart in your hand right and you're saying here is who i am please accept me my warts and all and that can be a very difficult thing but that is something that you can work with and as you nurture each other we got to do our seminar if you are interested in having us do a, a seminar no make sure to send us an email at info at willyjolly.com info at willyjolly.com we don't have time now to talk about it anymore because our time is up I, I, I look here i said i was going to talk about sex the bottom line is the the quarantine is over and yes <laughs> I'm so grateful that the quarantine is over because our brother got hooked up. Brothers need to get hooked up. Ladies, listen and remember. Men, remember, women need two things according to the book. They need intimacy and security. Intimacy and security. And men need two things, ladies, according to the book. Sex and respect. Sex and respect. Jolly Hook out. a brother up. All right, we got to go. Look, y'all join us next next Monday night. Go get the book and go to jollymarriage.com and get two copies. Get the whole package. We want you to get lots of copies because we want to sell millions of copies of the book so we can save a million marriages. We out. Jolly, Jolly out. out. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.